All right. We're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, of course, from the King James Bible. And we read, the Apostle Paul is writing, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with the, our house which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now the Apostle Paul, you know, don't you? He is the Apostle, preacher and teacher of the Gentiles. In this dispensation of grace, in this the dispensation of the grace of God as written in Ephesians chapter 3, we have one Apostle to follow, to follow Christ. He is one Apostle for the one body of Christ. We know that Christ has got 12 Apostles for the 12 tribes of Israel. These 12 Apostles Peter, James, John, they preach the gospel of the kingdom. They preach the gospel of the kingdom which requires that Israel, not the Gentiles, Israel had to believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah King, the prophesied Messiah King, believe in his name, confess his name, get water baptized, repent, confess their sins, get water baptized, sell all they had and follow Jesus with their own feet into the kingdom that was at hand. John the Baptist announces the kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is recorded in the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, preaches the gospel of the kingdom and in Matthew 15, 24, and what I'm going to say is going to sh shock some of you, in Matthew 15, 24, he clearly said, I've been sent by only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the, the greatest majority of churches, denominations, they have no clue about this. They don't even touch the, the subject. Because at that moment, if you understand what Christ is saying, the gospel of the kingdom is not the gospel you should be preaching. Because there is no kingdom. We are not in the kingdom. Israel has rejected the king and the kingdom. And we got to say with Christ, who said very clearly, Matthew, take note from the King James Bible, the only Bible, eh? the Bible that is preserved, infallible. In Matthew 15, 24, he said, But I've been sent but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when he sent the twelve to preach, he commanded them, forbidding, forbidding them to go to the Gentiles. He said, do, do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Do not go to the Samaritans, but only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach this gospel, announce the kingdom with the signs that follow. Even when he closed the gospel, in Matthew, in Mark 16, we, we read when, you know, those signs which shall follow those who believe in my name, that's the gospel of the name. They shall cast out devils, raise the dead, heal the sick, and so forth. Now, without for me going too much into that, you've got to understand that contrary to what normally Bible schools, denominational churches teach, there is more than one gospel in the Bible. And there is one gospel for us, the body of Christ, which is the gospel of the grace of God, as you can read in Acts 20, 24. The gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of, of Christ, the gospel of the cross. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Listen now. To everyone, anyone who believes. Not anyone who confesses the sin, get water baptized, speaks in tongues, go to church, pay tax, whatever. Anyone who believes. Believes what? Believes that Christ the Lord Jesus Christ, the true man, the true God, he died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again the third day for our justification, as Romans 
4.25 says he was delivered for our offenses. God delivered Christ. Christ gave himself. He shed his precious blood to redeem us from this present evil world. He died for our sins and rose again the third day as was prophesied. He did for our justification. We wouldn't know this unless the Lord Jesus Christ would have revealed this glorious gospel, the grace of God, to the new apostle that we follow. Paul, Saul of Tarsus, the enemy, who becomes the apostle, preacher, and teacher of the Gentiles. So now, we're getting instructions, my dear friends, concerning the doctrine, the walk, and the destiny of the body of Christ, the church, in the letters of Paul. Romans to Philemon. Okay? So Romans will be foundational, and then progressive revelation you have to understand this glorious purpose of God to save Jews and Gentiles alike all men by grace through faith without us doing anything the work has been done not by me not by you not by anybody that you can think of but by the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God has accomplished all that was necessary for the salvation of your soul by the death and resurrection of Christ so now Paul is talking to the Corinthians and say, we know, don't we, <laughs> that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were the soul, talking about this body in which we live now, because we are, our spirit is safe, all right? The body is good because it's for the Lord. He created the body. There is nothing wrong with the body. But there is also another thing present with us. Sin is still present with us. Romans explains that. That's why we still sin. Well, that's why we can give in, you know, to temptations. We haven't got this supernatural power not to sin. We can only understand that being under grace, all our sins are forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7, 2 uh, Colossians 2, 13, 14. All our sins, transgressions, offenses, they've been forgiven. So we don't need even to confess our sins. We need to acknowledge what Christ has accomplished, believe it, and live walking by faith, not by sight, knowing that even if we fail in one way or another, with thoughts, words, or deeds, we are forgiven. Now, this is not as that some people say, license to sin. The reality is, grace has been given because we sin. This is the point. Because we sin. And we got some birds here. So Paul says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is wonderful. So while we walk by faith, not by sight, in these bodies that decay on a daily basis, they say that seven year, every, every seven years our body is not the same. The, all the, the cells change, you know. That's what they say. The reality is, we're not getting any younger, we're getting older. We're not getting stronger, we're getting weaker. Not only physically, but also mentally, psychologically. There are lots of problems connected to life in this earth. But, there is hope. Christ with a hope. Christ with a life. A life now, as saved believers, say by grace, having done nothing but believing what Christ has accomplished, a life is it with Christ in God. When Christ who is alive shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. The apostle here say, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, like our body is compared to a tabernacle, to a tent, you know, and what happens gets dissolved. You know, when we die, if we get buried, it goes back to the earth. You know, some goes in gas, some goes in water, liquid, and some goes back in the minerals of the earth. Or if we get burnt. You know, some people are so scrupulous about being buried. And I, what about those people that die in an explosion? Their body gets shattered. You can't even find the pieces. So people that get drown you never find the body if they are believers the lord knows them don't worry about that but the point of the matter is for well, we know 
that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we, the body of Christ, the believers, have a building of God, a house not made with hands. He's not talking about a house with roof and there's the, there's the new body, the glorified body. Paul talks about this also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The chapter where, from verse 1 to 4, we find this glorious gospel of the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. How he died for our sins, he was buried according to the scripture, he rose again third day according to the scripture, and we are saved if we keep, if we believe, keep in mind, you know, we believe this gospel, not another gospel, you know, because the gospel of the kingdom growing is a great gospel that's being set aside for now. Cannot save us because we're not in the kingdom. And we, even though we might acknowledge, of course, that Jesus Christ is the King of Israel, it wouldn't save us. What it saves us is to understand that instead of trying to do works, works, what we need to believe what He has done. What He's done is perfect. God is pleased with His Son. That's why I say we are accepted in the beloved. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. So let's go back here. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house no man with us, eternal in the heavens. Aren't you glad? I am very glad. I'm 70. Every day for me now, every day is a blessing because I've reached seven decades on this earth, you know. And every day I say, well, praise God, another day. Another day I can preach this gospel of the grace of God so other people can be saved by grace through faith no works whatsoever Ephesians 2 8 9 we got a house a new body waiting for us eternal in the heavens did you know the heavens it's not only one heaven we look at this heaven this is called the firmament and then there is the second heaven the heavens and then there is the third heaven where there is the throne of God what is about what is below? Second Corinthians 5 2. For in this, in this body, we groan. You understand the term groan? We suffer. We earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, our house which is from heaven. So there is in the true believer, because we groan, also because we we under the stress of, you know, we sin, but we really we, we really don't like that. We, we would love not to sin anymore, you know, but we can't play God here. We walk by faith, not by sight. We are very glad, very, very grateful to the Lord that we are forgiven. And every effort needs to be done not to sin in any possible way. But we still sin, but we are forgiven, okay? It's not a question, like some churches say, Oh, Jesus saved you so for the past sins, but now you got to uh, keep yourself saved. That's ridiculous. A, a savior that does a job half away is not a really savior, you know. If I wasn't able to be to save myself before, how in the world I'm gonna keep myself safe now? Yeah, but you got the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, but I still sin. Praise God for His glorious gospel of grace. Praise God, they called and commissioned the Apostle Paul to be the Apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles. They gave to him the revelation of the mystery. As you can read in these 13 letters, Romans with Philemon, it takes time to study, to show that self-approved unto God a workman, then is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, as is written in 2 Timothy 2, 15, King James Bible. So, the apostle says in 2 Corinthians 5, 2, For in this, in this body, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. We desire to be clothed upon with a new body. It so be so that being clothed will will she not be found naked. In other words, we're not gonna be disembodied spirit floating somewhere, you know. Praise God. We leave this earth, we go to the Lord, and at the time of resurrection, rapture, the great catching up of the body of Christ, we're gonna receive this glorious new body that is waiting for us. 2 Corinthians 5, 4, for, him, for we, you see, it's talking about we, we, we. It's not talking about the world. This is not the unbelievers, but we, the body of Christ. For we that are in this tabernacle, this body, do groan, being burdened. 
Not for that we will be unclothed, but clothed upon. The mortality might be swallowed up of life. That's so beautiful, as also is written in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. You know, the power of the life of God will swallow mortality. With, in, we enter in immortality. We're going to be with the Lord forever, man. Praise God. Praise God. Now, it's so important this. Now, you see, now, he that has wrought us for the same thing is God, who also it's given unto us the earnest of the spirit. You see, this is amazing. Wrong doctrine creates wrong communication. You go in the church where they say that you have to accept Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. And then you have got to ask the Lord to give you the Holy Spirit. And then you have got to confess him. You, you, it's all about you. Me, myself and I. This reminds me very much of Lucifer. The five times in Isaiah 14, he said, I will ascend. I will, you know, I, I, I had a, a problem. No, my dear friend, it's not what you do, I do. It's what Christ has done. You simply believe. And so what happens? When you believe this gospel, when you believe this glorious gospel, the Holy Spirit of God seals you into the body of Christ, into Christ. See, while the video goes on, I go to Ephesians. In chapter 1, in verse 13, what do I read? I read 12, 13, 14. That we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ. You see? It's not talking about what the Baptist confessed his sin. Trust. Ephesians 1 6. In whom ye also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. 1 Corinthians 15 3 to 4. In whom also after you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So the Holy Spirit has been given us. We are sealed. So that's amazing. We are saved and sealed by grace. It's the work of God. Brothers and sisters and friends, it is the work of God. Now he that has wrote, worked, us for the self-same thing is God. What self-same thing? The fact that we're going into this glorified body. Why we suffer here? We grow here. No worries. Just continue to press on because the day is going to come. And you come out from this and you go into the glory. Praise God with the Lord. Think of God. The salvation of Israel is of God. Salvation is of the Lord. And the salvation of the body of Christ is the work of God. That's why we say by grace through faith, no works. It's the work of God. It's a free gift of God. I know that the flesh doesn't like it. I know the religion doesn't like it. But that's what the word of God declared. And my dear friend, you and I, we better line up with the word of God. The will of God in this dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians 3, chapter 3, verse 1. And then Timothy is that he will have, he will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So the Lord is very clear. He's not the author of confusion. He wants you to, to save you. He wants you to be saved because you already done the work. You believe it. And he wants you to study the word of truth rather than divided so you know what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do in the future. And what is your destiny? Praise God in Christ. So God has done this glorious work and he has sealed as he also given, has given unto us the earnest, the down payment of the Spirit. It's like, you know, you will go, you go and, and acquire, purchase a house, Cost, I don't know, one million, and you give a down payment of 50,000, whatever amount of money, doesn't matter. That's the down payment, it's the earnest. Then when you have the difference of money, you go there, you seal the, you sign the contract, they give you the title deed, and the house is yours. Well, praise God, you don't purchase anything here. God, Christ has purchased for us. <laughs> praise God. He is giving his precious blood. 
He has paid the price in full. It's the finished work of Christ, the complete work of Christ. That's why then when we believe we are complete in him, Colossians 2.10, in him who is the head of all principality and powers, Christ who is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 6, therefore we are always confident, says the Apostle Paul, and we say with him, yes, amen, knowing that, what? While we are at home in the body, eh, we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it continues, says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. The unbelievers, they attack you. And they say, prove to me that your God, this and that, you know, is so powerful. Look, I'm sick. Heal me. You can't heal anybody. You can't even heal yourself. When you're sick, if you're honest and not pretending, you go to the doctor. And sometimes when you've been convinced from, convinced from some faith healer of these people, and you pray and pray and pray to be healed, you, you didn't get healed, then you thought God was mad at you. Because they told you, you didn't get healing because it was secret sin in your life, because you didn't pay tithes, because you didn't forgive your friend, because you kicked the cat on the way out. Nah, the reality is, healing of the body is the new body that we're going to receive. For the now, <laughs> for the now we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, and let me ask you, faith in what? In the word of truth, rightly divided. In what God has declared, what is written. Praise God, it's 2,000 years, not today. It's 2,000 years that this glorious gospel of the grace of God has been revealed to the Apostle Paul. It's called the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16.25 This mystery was hidden in God. Nobody knew that God was going to save sinners that would believe, believers then. By the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. If Satan would have known that through this glorious gospel, people can get saved, he would never crucify the, the Lord of glory. All right, continue. For we walk by faith, not by sight. As I said, you know, you look at things in life and you say, I believe because I see, seeing and believing, they say. But things can be very tricky. First of all, we don't have a perfect eyesight. It's very limited. Even when we look on the horizon, we reach a certain point. After that, we can't watch. We can't see. But what about optical illusions? Eh? You say, what is this? <laughs> optical illusions. You think that something is moving on the paper. It's a, it's, a, it's a drawing. It's a drawing. But you see the wheels going around. Why? Because it's a game between what you see with your eyes, what your brain elaborates and everything and what this so-called reality is anything but reality seems to be real but it is not a guarantee but the word of god the word of truth is the reality let god be true in every man a liar romans 3 verse 4 all right so paul says for we walk by faith not by sight and continues, you know, putting an emphasis, we say emphasis. <laughs> we are confident, I say, we, the body of Christ, we together with the apostle, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. But never forget that Paul, our apostle, preacher, teacher, he has seen the Lord. He was against, you know, he was dead against Christ and, and his disciples because he thought that Christ was a fraud. He didn't believe the resurrection, you know. But he, he, he did believe when he saw him on the way to Damascus in Acts 9, when Christ appeared in a glorious appearing. And when he saw him, he knew that Christ was truly God. He was risen. Not only that, he's been taken up to the third heaven, the Apostle Paul. It talks like in third person, you know, I know a man, you know, I don't know if the body or the body. The point of the matter is he seen and heard things which are not, you know, lawful 
to uh, as I exactly to say, you know, it's like when Christ was on earth with his people, with Israel, and he said, if I tell you, if I tell you earthly things, you don't believe me. How would you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Heaven is a heavenly places, you know, the glory of God, the God we worship and serve by grace. Thank you, Lord. He's such a mighty God. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. He's the sustainer of all things. All things consist in Christ. He's Christ is the creator of all things. Visible, invisible, principalities, powers, dominions. Okay, so we're talking something really, the apostles say, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And so he says, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we might be accepted of him. Now, praise God, we already accepted in Christ, Ephesians 1, thing, 1 6, by saying, in what we labor, you know, how do you get accepted? What about this? Started to show thyself approved unto God. You see? Accept, approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is the point. If you go around preaching unto people, repent, confess your sins, confess your sin to God, confess your sin to man, confess your sin to a priest, confess your, sin, your sins to the church. That's not a gospel. That's a religion. You know, it's another spirit, another gospel, another Jesus. It can't save you. Actually, you will be under a curse. You need the gospel, the grace of God, where you have done nothing, Christ has done it all, you believe it, you give glory to God for what is done by believing and proclaim, declare the gospel of the grace of God. As Paul says, I declare the gospel of Christ. Wherefore we labor. So, after we are saved, we can serve the Lord in freedom. Everybody can serve the Lord. Whatever you say and do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, the glory of God, you know. That whether present or absent, we might be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, this is not for sin, okay? In fact, say that everyone might receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. When I say it's not for sin, it wouldn't make any sense. Our sins has been judged by the cross. The Lord has taken care of that. He's not imputing sins. If people will go to hell, we'll go to hell because they reject the only way to go to heaven, which is believing this glorious gospel, the grace of God, trusting that God has done it. You know what I mean? But now, as believers, what do we say? What do we preach to people? Oh, you know, you want to be saved, come to church, get baptized in water, confess your sins, give, pay tithes, sing in the choir, Show us, you know, with a lifestyle. No, that's not a gospel. That's a religion, okay? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone might receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be or good or bad. That his body, in this case, is the body of Christ, of which we are part. We are members in particular. From the moment we believe in this gospel, the grace of God, we are members, in particular, of this glorious body. Ooh, what happened? <laughs> oh, praise God. I lost my word. There it is. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Now, not that it is a terror to us, is our Lord, our Savior, but to the people. To the people. People think, ah, you know, what are you talking about, you know, with this gospel of grace of God? They don't understand the, that they got to give an account to, to God, you know, you know, of their life. Actually, God doesn't even know them until they are in Christ. I mean, it takes one second, a nanosecond, the moment you believe, He knows you in Christ because it, the scripture is very clear. The Lord knows those who are His. So I'm not going to say, you belong to the Lord, you don't belong to the Lord. Because I don't like or I like your face or the way you speak or the way you move. We're all sinners to start with. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
Oh. Which means you, me, your mom, your dad, your, your ancestors, your, your offspring. From Adam to the last man I ever come. We are born on this earth. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being redeemed freely by the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. By the blood of Christ, not by the water of the baptistry of any denomination. I don't attack the, the people, but I got to tell the denominational uh, Christianese or whatever it is, is something that can be extremely dangerous because it can give you another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. You need to follow Paul, to follow Christ. But you say, I follow Jesus. You, you know, you can tell this to somebody who doesn't know the Bible. You can tell this to me because I can prove to you that it's impossible for you, for me, for anyone to follow Jesus according to the red letters in this the dispensation of the grace of God. Actually, Christ doesn't want that. He says, follow Paul. Because I gave to Paul the revelation of the mystery. I gave to Paul the revelation of the fellowship of the mystery, the, the dispensation of the grace of God, the gospel of grace of God, and all the instructions, the sound doctrine pertaining to our new life as a new creature, not born again, but as part of the new creature. We'll see now. Knowing that for the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We want to persuade men. Persuasion to salvation, not to condemnation. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are manifest in your consciences. For we commit not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may yet somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Okay? Now, the motivation. For the love of Christ constrains us. Dear friends, in the gospel of grace of God, there is not the motivation of money. I want to preach the gospel so I can ask the tithes. In a wage. The gospel is free. You should be able to preach it for free. Giving under grace is a question of generosity in total freedom. God's love is sheer forgiver, yes. But you know, you're not under any obligation, like you are not under the law. The body of Christ is under grace. So the motivation to preach this gospel. And number one, to give glory to God, to serve Him, and consequently, to allow other people from all nations, from everywhere, whoever is listening, to believe this gospel and be saved. Praise God Almighty. So the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge, what, Paul? That if one died for all, then we're all dead. That's amazing. When Christ died, he died for all, so all were all dead. We are dead with Christ, buried with Christ, risen with Christ, ascended with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. The body of Christ is the new creature. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God in Christ Jesus, my dear friend. For the love of Christ constrains us. Because we just judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. So we're dead with him. And that he died for all, 2 Corinthians 5, 15. That they which live should not, should not, notice this is not the law, this is the exhortation and the teaching. Henceforth, from this moment on, live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We are property of the Lord. We've been purchased. We belong to him. So we better learn to serve him now, because we will serve him for eternity. Of course, in a glorious condition, in a glorified body, as we read. A body that will never get tired, a body that will not need to go, you know, to do all the functions of this body. Praise God. 
and they therefore all that they which live should not ask for live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again the apostle paul uses a lot of triplets he uses uh, repeats a lot right? because repetition is the best teacher constantly that christ died for our sins that christ was buried that christ rose again for us to save us to make us to you know when you believe this gospel what happens the righteousness of god that you need that we need that i need to be with god gets imputed to you for christ's sake because of christ praise god that's amazing we stand righteous with god not because we pray the lord we fasted we gave money we sacrifice our life because christ sacrificed his life shed his blood we believe we become members of his body we serve him now in total freedom not under the bondage of the law but in the liberty of the spirit and we preach what this glorious word already has declared oh glory to god second corinthians 5 16 wherefore henceforth no we no man after the flesh yeah though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth know we him no more what does it mean whoever you are in the flesh you might be a professor or you might be an illiterate person that's not important whatever your position uh, they occupy in society you know your role that's not what god is interested god is interested in the salvation of your soul and then you can be an ambassador for christ and you know we don't know christ according to the red letters because the red letters matthew mark luke and john where god what jesus said that he was not talking to us eh? they are old testament books he said what yes in the same bible is written that a testament is not valid until the death of a testator and the lord jesus christ he dies yes at the end of the four gospels so all that is before is talking only the schools to israel is giving them information about the kingdom the famous sermon on the mountain is all about the kingdom it's nothing to do with you and me praise god and then of course we know from paul that whatever was written up for included for, that is is for our learning because if paul says that jesus came as a minister of the circumcision to com a minister of god to the circumcision to confirm the promises that god made to the fathers of israel the reason why jesus healed them all eh? and why in the kingdom of the gospel there is healing and and then there is baptism and so forth it's because if you want to be if you're called to be a priest a king a prophet for the lord you need to be whole from head to toe and you need to be washed we don't need that we are washed by the blood praise god we don't need any water baptism paul said christ sent me not to baptize but to preach what the gospel of the cross which is foolishness to man to the natural man but it shouldn't be to you to me if you are truly a believer so you see what he's introducing now the concept of the new creature he says wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yeah though we have known christ after the flesh yet now henceforth yet now henceforth we know him no more therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away behold all things are become new you get that all things have become new and all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation now before people jump into universalism or sinners with their sins forgiven in hell because you know just look what is written and all things are of god okay be, all things have become new eh? those things have become new because we are the new creature eh? are of god it's not a question that 
we made up this, you know, okay? Who has reconciled us? Let me ask you, who is, who are this us? The world? I personally think it is the body of Christ, the believers. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given to us, the body of Christ, the ministry of reconciliation. Is that clear? This gospel is for everybody. But until a person receives this gospel and believes it as the final answer, final solution to be reconciled to God, that person is not reconciled, even though the reconciliation has been provided. And I'll prove it now with this, explaining to with the God was in Christ, reconciled the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Great. So he was not imputing because he was imputing all the trespasses, the sins of Israel and of, all, of the other world to Christ. Okay? And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. This us, once again, is the body of Christ. Of course, the apostle Paul and Timothy and Titus and Silvanus and Barnabas, but also now, by extension, the faithful man that learned this and pass it on and preach and preach and preach to wit the was that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputed that trespass unto them, and has committed. This is the new commission. The new commission is not going all over the world and preaching and baptize them. No, 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 no. That's not to us. In fact, Peter and the twelve didn't go. They were in Jerusalem. They said in Jerusalem. All right. And Paul went by then preached the gospel of the kingdom. He preached this gospel of the grace of God. So the body of Christ has received, has been given the ministry of reconciliation. So we don't go around preaching to people. Ah, you going to hell, you homosexual. He doesn't go, the homosexual, he doesn't go to hell because he's homosexual. He goes to hell because if he does the receive the gospel of grace of God, he can be saved. Just like a very good law-abiding citizen, a good father, a good mother, whatever it is, who is all good, 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 but he rejects the gospel of the grace of God, it's going to go in hell. If you don't receive imputation of righteousness, you cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. You cannot stand with God. God is a righteous God. is a holy God. It makes me shudder, you know, shivers when I think it's cherubim, you know, holy, 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 continually, 24-7, all, all the time, they're just singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is to come. The, the, the holiness of God is just something, um, you know, beyond our understanding. We've never seen anybody like God we never seen Jesus, but in the scripture, you know, Jesus lived a perfect life. We never seen, but we haven't seen anybody else. We believe what is written, but we haven't seen anyone like this. We need to have the imputation of righteousness. And that's why we preach reconciliation. How? Let's see. Verse 20, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then, after all this that God has done, now that he's created the new creature, eh? Now then, we are what? Christians? I don't think so. We are ambassadors for Christ. Okay, I don't want to be a uh, fast spot, but I don't see Paul calling the believers, the saints, the faithful, and so forth, Christians. Peter calls the disciples Christians among the Gentiles, you know. But Paul calls us saints members of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters, and so forth. And in this case, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. Come on, people. If we got to pray people, eh? In Christ's stead, because Christ is the right hand of the Father in heaven, okay, in the third heaven, 
And we are down here as his body, as his ambassadors, means that people need to be reconciled. They are not reconciled. Otherwise, it would be, how do you say, uh, pleonastic. Uh, that's a very difficult word. Superfluous. Uh, what do I say to a person that is already reconciled? Be reconciled. You just say, you reconcile. Everybody is reconciled. Oh, praise the Lord. Universalism. People go around saying, how can a God, God of love send people to hell? God is not sending nobody to hell, but people will go to hell because if they don't get this glorious salvation, how in the world are they going to avoid hell? So, but you know, he was very religious. That's another reason. The Lord Jesus Christ didn't come to create a religion. People make a religion out of that, but he didn't. Friends, let's go on. Now then, now then, now, we are the body of Christ of now, what's happening now. Now many people love this because people want to, because of pride, whatever it is, they want to prove to God that now they can, they miss the gospel of grace in a tremendous way because they were not able to do the, the will of God before, then they believe. But then now they think, because now I believe, now I'm going to prove to God that I can obey the law. Do you, do you read the law? Paul says, you know, do you know the law has 613 points? Besides the Ten Commandments, which we all break in one way or another, the number one, we don't love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, spirit and soul and strength and so forth. What about the other nine? Woo! Then there are 603 extra. It's impossible. The law has never been given to the body of Christ anyway. We were Gentiles, aliens and strangers from the, from the covenants of the commonwealth of Israel. Without hope, without God in the world, without Christ, you know. Unless Christ has come and done what he's done and called Paul to tell us, we wouldn't know. If the Lord Jesus Christ didn't call, didn't save and call, commission Paul, we wouldn't have a chance with the Apostle Peter, you know. The Lord had to send three times, you know, a vision with this shit with the animals unclean, you know, to send him to send him to to the Gentiles, you know. Just go here one moment because I got to finish this. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then, we are ambassador for Christ. Ambassador can only say. You know what has been told to say we cannot go to say people things that god doesn't say oh but it's written in the bible yes in the bible is also written to build an ark are you gonna build an ark no he told this to Noah. in the bible there are sacrifices of animals are you sacrificing animals everybody knows that that's not more necessary now because christ shed his blood so to be dispensational doesn't mean that you want to adhere to hyper dispensation. They call it the old funny name. The word dispensation is present four times in this King James Bible. So Paul talks about dispensation. I follow Paul to follow Christ. Of course there are dispensations. Dispensation is God dealing with mankind according to instruction and purpose that he has. And if you listen to that and live accordingly obey by faith you know you trust that's it nobody knew that god was gonna do this thing with the body of christ it was a mystery hidden god but now it's been revealed now then we're ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god and it's giving you the motivation why for he he who God has made him, him who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this now. To be seen for us. This is mind-blowing for me. I don't know about you. God has made him, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be seen for me, for us, us, the body of Christ, the, the believers, who knew no sin. This is so horrific. It's a glorious thing, but we have seen from the beginning, we, so we are used to sin. People say everybody sin. Eh, of course. 
In Adam, we, everybody's dead in trespasses and sin. We all sin. It's easy as yes. we breathe and sin. What about our thoughts? You might project an image of a holy man to other people and have the thoughts and imaginations which are absolutely horrid. The reality is, there is no way in the world that you can make yourself. People say, I'm, I'm right with God. You're not right with God on your own. Impossible. You're a deceiver if you say this. But you, if you believe what God has done, that's different. For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be seen for us who knew no sin. Jesus Christ never sinned. He was in perfect total, 100%, 24-7, around the clock, 365 days, and 366 <laughs> in total harmony, in synchrony, in synchrony with the Father, with God. He was God himself in the flesh. But as a man, too, he was totally obedient. He humbled himself. He didn't set aside his powers, all this stuff that I hear sometimes. He humbled himself even to the death of the cross. He sacrificed because he's a tremendously good, wonderful, glorious God. The Lord Jesus Christ is amazing. Praise God. It says here clearly, For he, God, has made him, Jesus, to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. They might is because unless you believe, if you don't believe, it doesn't happen. But for those who do believe, it happens. God stacks his faithful word on that. If God says something, man, you got to be careful. It's God. It's not a man. You know, he can lie. God cannot lie. People say, you know, I want to do this because God spoke to me. God, God is not speaking to nobody. Not with audible voices or dreams of vision and imagination. He's speaking through his word. He has preserved this word, my dear friend. So that you and I can believe it. Be saved and sealed by grace. We become the righteousness of God. We are made the righteousness of God in him. For Christ's sake, in Christ, because of Christ, by his cross. Please, never, 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 never think it is because of you, because of me, or because of... Oh. The Lord is pleased with his Son. That's why we are accepted in the beloved. For he has made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous in our God in him. Have you believed? I'm preaching here. Have you believed? Don't tell me. It's between you and God. I'm a single believer. Single in I'm married. My, my wife is a believer too. Praise God. But I mean, I'm, I'm alone here. There is not a grace church where we preach this doctrine. There are all sorts of denominations. Okay, all sorts. Think about any. There are 40,000 denominations in the world, even more. But there are no grace churches, grace assemblies. There are a few, a few believers. My wife and some of my kids, my mother, my mother-in-law, my sister. So we are a few people, praise God, that we believe this, but not many. We know filling places, you know. I'm here on, on the net, on, on the web, so that you might hear this gospel. And I can reach you with this glorious gospel. You might be saved. And then you can take the King James Bible, study the word, the truth, write it, divide it. You start to understand. And you prepare yourself. The material is very simple. You know, I just tell people that Christ died for their sins. He was buried, rose again for their justification. And you have souls saved and saints, which means believers, saved, believers, edified in the faith. Praise God. I just uh, want to say, I finish with this. 
I pray with all my heart that you believe that Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, died for your sins. That he was buried. He rose again the third day for your justification. The time is short. Redeeming the time. The days are evil. The time is short. Believe. Don't, don't, don't say, I'll believe tomorrow. Believe now. You don't need to say anything. You know, even a prayer. Just believe in your heart. Believe. God can read your heart. He knows if you do believe. Grace and peace to all. Grace and peace in the Lord Jesus Christ to all.